Alright, so this is a TTI EX752 switch mode bench power supply that I got uh, for free for a while ago from my old job. And uh, if I recall correctly, this unit came in for service and uh, a guy who was uh, just some extra who was doing work practice from. Uh, uh, you know, was like 15 years old and he got in and tampered with this thing and I can't, don't, nobody knows what the original fault was but at the moment I think it's completely and utterly dead and uh, I had a quick dig around in it uh, just after I got it and uh, he's done a fair amount of damage to it a fair amount of caps have been replaced with the wrong ones and a few ICs have been very dodgily desoldered and resoldered. So pretty much anything could be wrong with this thing and uh, it's a fairly high tech unit. Especially for just being a bench power supply. Although I haven't put too much time into it, so there's a fair chance it can still be saved. I think it's fairly service friendly, although you can't get a good manual for it. And uh, it's got a nice feature where you can, uh, uh, well, parallel the outputs up for 4 amps at 75 volts, so you can series, put them in series for 150 volts at 2 amps and it's all I don't know if this is digi digitally controlled or analog controlled but uh, either way it's a very nice unit so it would be a nice upgrade from <laughs> this old 19 volt <laughs> 2 amp L200 based thing not for that there's anything wrong with it Anyway, let's get to it. Alright, here are the innards of the unit. It doesn't have quite as uh, many components inside as I remembered. So, this could be an easier task than I was fearing. <laughs> Although, I remember this was the general area where there was the most carnage. These two ICs have been replaced by that guy and they are very dodgily soldered. So I'm gonna have to take the board out again and uh, uh, force myself to remember how it looks. And uh, these caps around here, these two, had been replaced with some awful things. I hope they were the right values because I the last time I was in here I put some better caps in there. Uh, random caps all over the board have been replaced, hopefully with the right values. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what you can tell. I have no idea what's wrong with it. I think it was entirely dead. Not even booting up. But yeah, I'm just going to have to take it apart, give it a quick look, then maybe hook it up, see perhaps outside of a case because there isn't really a whole lot of stuff going on, and uh, just see where <laughs> where we've got voltages and currents and so forth. I can spot a lot of uh, zero ohm resistors around here which could be a good sign in case one of those have just burned up it could be a relatively easy fix, just some broken power device this thing is passively cooled and for a 300 plus watt uh, power supply that's not a whole lot of cooling and this thing isn't exactly new so let's get down and dirty I dread to see what we'll find down there and here the nasties begin. This is these are those two ICs I was looking at earlier. 
and uh, they've been bodged pretty hard in pla into place there but there doesn't seem to be anything really extremely wrong with how they soldered in so with a bit of luck they are not the problem I wouldn't trust uh, the other technician to have actually identified the problem so I'm just going to skip those for the time being and just move on to generally checking those serial resistors and measuring voltages I might uh, take out the front uh, front board of this thing or perhaps dismount the entire front panel and just hook it up here on the bench and try and turn it on and have a good measure around. Alright, I've done a fair bit of troubleshooting now and uh, it seems at least part of the problem is in this little voltage regulator down there which doesn't seem to be able to start which is powering all this circuitry up here including this 7815 and uh, I've done a very ugly rig here. I've taken my ungrounded power supply, which is isolated from the grid but does have the negative lead bound to the case, uh, and hooked it up here to that uh, non starting voltage regulator. And this is an absolutely lethal rig because I this power supply will be unisolated from the grid because I don't have an isolation transformer so anybody who touches that the case of this thing risks getting electrocuted and if the case touches ground it could be make a lot of sparks so <laughs> this is absolutely lethal and I'm going to try and keep my fingers out of it and it's just hooked up here with my good meter monitoring the current is just picking up some noise right now because everything is powered down and a crap meter monitoring the voltage and uh, the power supply is limited to about a hundred milliamps right beneath that and I can turn it on without having the actual power supply hooked up and it'll draw about sixty odd milliamps and it's set to about 16 volts so I were getting a bit of voltage drop probably due to the load but uh, that should be reasonable for getting this thing started the actual circuit is fairly weird because the input of the 7815 goes to that power supply via a single diode but the output is also coupled to the same spot by a 22 ohm resistor so I'm not entirely sure what they were going for there but I've, I'm powering up the input of the 7805 and uh, we'll see what happens everything could go up in smoke or I could die or nothing will happen or it will work so here we go Well, I actually got something. The display panel blinked slightly while I powered that up, which is more than it's done before when I've done previous similar tests. So this was a positive thing. I'm going to have to raise the current limit and try again. There's no better camera mount than a heap of laptop, so let's try again. I've completely disconnected the internal regulator. It seemed to be shorting out or dropping the voltage down to about 1.8 volts as soon as the circuit was trying to power on and if I disconnected the AC mains I could get a little blip out of the display so with a bit of luck it's just the internal regulator that sh screwed it up and the rest of the circuit works fine under external power so let's go
voltage doesn't go to hell now. It doesn't do anything either. At least it isn't blowing up. It's dead. Okay, so after a lot of troubleshooting, I've come to suspect that the active PFC controller in this power supply has failed somehow, because it's uh, powered initially by two dropper resistors, these two I believe, which uh, don't power anything but this PFC controller, which uh, is supposed to run on an internally generated uh, voltage once uh, it's gotten started however it seems uh, it doesn't start until the voltage that it gets out of these two resistors which are okay uh, goes b above a certain level and it never reaches that level so since nothing else is being powered from that those resistors I suspect that something's kind of broken just a little inside this IC and it was a shot of four pounds to try and replace it and uh, yeah I'm super excited this could actually work so let's go okay this is it for the moment of proof time to plug it in with a new PFC controller which is inserted the right way And it's still entirely dead. And that's as much footage as I bothered to shoot before I just stopped filming and uh, kept on working on it for maybe another 10 hours. And after that calling a very nerdy friend of mine and asking him to come over and uh, put our Geek your heads together and just uh, tackle this thing properly. And uh, as you can see, we managed to repair it after about uh, 10 or 15 hours of quite intense uh, crunching of schematics and thinking. I actually managed to contact the manufacturer and get a proper service manual for this thing which was an immense help and I, if I hadn't managed to do that then I probably wouldn't have it running now. So I'm sorry to not be able to give any more good footage of uh, it being repaired but uh, trust me it was mostly just two guys in a small workshop scratching their heads for a couple of hours so you didn't miss out too much. And now that this unit is actually working I am incredibly excited to have this as a new addition to the lab. For instance, it's just so incredibly flexible since it's got dual isolated outputs which are completely independent from each other. So at the moment you can see the current jumping around and that's because I'm running t two different inverters off of it, one 12 volt on the left and a 24 volt unit on the right. Just like that. This will go for any configuration you can imagine. I mean, you've got 0 to 75 volts, 2 amps to take from, infinitely adjustable. And it worked for exactly one day before it broke again, but this time on the logic board. You can see now it's set to 75 volts on that channel and uh, 150 volts on this channel. Well, if you take a look at the mode selector, you can't do 150 volts on in more than one channel mode. If I do it like that, it's okay. But it shouldn't go up to above 75 on either of those modes. And 
if I turn the output on, it reads correctly. And looking through the service manual, there is an IC, a multiplexer, which is supposed to handle the voltage reading when it's uh, when the output is turned off and uh, a pin on it is supposed to go low in order to make it double the amount the measurement it takes or something along those lines I haven't quite put myself into it but I suspect that that IC or something around it has failed since it's quite obviously simply going into that uh, double voltage measurement mode while it's not in the 150 volt setting it would be pretty nice if it could actually do 150 volts at 4 amps but alas ah I believe I found the problem so this is an a 4053 logic circuit and it essentially works like a relay and uh, in this implementation, when you take pin 11, which is this one, when you take this one high, pins 13 and 14 are supposed to be connected. But if we probe, well, through a 70 ohm MOSFET, but if we probe pins 13 and 14, they are not connected. And if we probe pins 12 and 14, which are supposed to be connected when pin 11 is low, which it is not, we see that they are connected. So this IC seems to have suffered a latch up. And if I take my multimeter probe and bridge those two, we get a much better reading. Now, when I turn the output on, it's not the correct voltage but it's a lot closer to 46 than uh, 91.5 is so I think I'm going to go ahead and order a new IC to slap in there and I'll try again after that okay so while I've decided to just uh, put this unit back together using it with a broken voltmeter until the time comes that I order more parts from Mouse or some reputable distributor, I thought I'd just, uh, before I put it back together again, take you through what the actual problem with it was. And the original problem, which uh, caused this unit to get scrapped and end up at the repair shop, was that uh, this output transistor, an IRF540, had shorted for some reason, I don't know why and uh, also that resistor there had uh, gone open and if we look at the schematic yeah, we can see that uh, this is our output transistor, I don't know which channel I'm supposed to look at they are both pretty much identical uh, this is our output transistor and it's being fed from a voltage line here and there is our resistor which is on the collector of this transistor and uh, essentially if this resistor is burned up the entire circuit does not start and there is absolutely no load on this uh, magamp converter it's essentially a PC power supply which causes the voltage across let's see here across this capacitor to get high enough to activate this optocoupler which turns off the primary side regulator and uh, the technician who looked at this unit before me failed to uh, diagnose that the symptom it would have what it was that it would take and blink the LEDs on the front very briefly about once a second and he attacked the primary side mostly these two logic gates which make up the uh, gate drive for the these two primary side switching transistors which are coupled through this transformer here 
and have a power amplifier stage there. And he'd uh, messed up the connection so that a, a pad had fallen off which I hadn't noticed while I had been missing here and my mate spotted that and uh, once we uh, patched that up we got it actually got it to the stage it was in when it got to the shop i.e. blinking front panel lights instead of being entirely dead and uh, that's pretty much it only after that did we discover that this uh, regulator was actually broken, but that didn't take anywhere near long enough to diagnose and find since it was actually faulty components and not just a broken trace. It was very hard to visually see that it was supposed to be a trace there due to the very poor quality of this circuit board. Whew. Anyway, this unit at least mostly works now. It needs a new logic gate, but other than that, it works just fine. I took the time to actually calibrate the meters before it broke, before the meters broke, and uh, it, the voltage readings are fantastically accurate. You can essentially set it to, well, the accuracy of my meter. It's limited to the resolution it has with just three digits per display, but as far as it goes, <laughs> It's spot on. If you set the voltage to 12.5, it'll go to 12.6 when the actual voltage is 12.556 or something like that. So it's incredibly accurate on the voltage readings. And we have the range in all temperatures and everything. So this is a pretty nice unit, uh, functionality wise. It's just a damn shame that the build quality is so horrible. Because it's just, it's a pretty bad design and just not very well executed. But when it works, it does a fantastic job. And I might post another video when I actually get around to replacing this transistor with a proper one. It's just got some random main switcher from the junk box, which works for testing purposes, but the channel starts to oscillate if it's loaded down in the wrong way and well fixing the voltmeter but I don't know those are just small things just replacing two parts so I'll probably not bother now I'm more concerned with trying to make some space on the bench for it I'm considering just moving these cabins over there and somehow moving this entire stack a bit further to there so that I could get a bit more space but we'll see about that when I get around to it. Right now I think I need to go to bed. Cheerio, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. I am going to enjoy this thing that's for sure.